Hello and a warm welcome to the Refreshing Views Observatory where we love observing the night sky. My name is Mark Radici. Now it can be hard to observe in the long summer twilight, but there is one class of object we can still see in the long summer evenings. So join me as we observe some of my favourite double stars. So why would we want to observe double stars? Well, when we think of stars, we imagine solitary stars like our own sun. However, there are many easily observable stars, fascinating stars that are physical pairs, triples, or even multiple stars, born from the same dust cloud. So we have the amazing sight of stars physically orbiting each other. So just like the Earth orbits around the Sun, these are stars that are gravitationally bound to each other. So how do we find double stars in the night sky? Now, there are many observing guides, but I really enjoy having Sky Safari on my iPad. Not only can I use it to control the scope over Wi-Fi, I can set it to show me the best double stars and take my pick. So we've got the telescope set up, we've got a mug of tea, it's just starting to get dark, and we'll start at the star Vega, one of the brightest stars in the night sky in the constellation Lyra. Now I don't want to harp on, but Vega is one of the brightest stars in the night sky at a distance of 25 light years. So to find Vega, now at this time of year, it should be rising in the northeastern sky as darkness falls, and with that centred in the eyepiece, it's a short star hop away to one of the most fascinating stars, Epsilon Lyrae, 160 light years away. Now to the eye, this is a single star, but even in low power binoculars, we can see it as a double star, with the imaginative names Epsilon 1 and Epsilon 2 orbiting each other every few hundred thousand years. Now, if you magnify the image further, we can split both stars into another pair, giving us a double double. Now, as the two stars are so close together, only a few arc seconds apart, you can test the resolving power of your telescope by seeing what is the lowest power you can just split the two stars. Now, the other reason I like using Sky Safari is it gives me all the information we need to understand the object that we're looking at. So reading through for the double-double for Epsilon Lyrae shows that the Epsilon 1 stars have a magnitude of 4.7 and 6.2 with 2.8 arc seconds of separation. Whereas Epsilon 2 Lyrae, they're closer in brightness at 5.1 and 5.5, and a slightly tighter separation of 2.2 arc seconds. So there we are, a double double to start the night. Now a short star hop away is another double in Lyra. This is Zeta Lyrae. Again, this appears as, as a single star to the naked eye, but with a telescope, we can easily split it. To this, my eyes, this appears as a pretty creamy yellow pair this pair of stars are 152 light years away, shining at a magnitude 4.4 and 5.7 respectively, separated by 44 arc seconds. So it should be splittable with binoculars. Now at the southern end of Lyra is Beta Lyrae or Sheliac at a distance of 800 light years. And again, we get two stars for the price of one, but with a bonus of some astrophysics. Now the brightest star here is normally at magnitude 3.5, whereas the fainter star is at magnitude 7.2, much fainter star. The two are separated by 46 arc, arc seconds, again, putting it into the range of small telescopes and binoculars. Now, the brighter of the two stars, the primary star, is actually a variable star that fluctuates in brightness. And this is because it's actually a fascinating double star. The pair are so close together that they can't be separated in a telescope. In fact, they're so close together that mutual gravitation has physically deformed each surface of the star and they even have a common atmosphere as mass flows from one to the other so it's real astrophysics at the eyepiece so while we're here let's jump to some more astrophysics and enjoy the ghostly ring nebula messier 57 clearly not a double star but one of the finest sights in the night sky and this is a star that's come to the end of its life it's lost its atmosphere into this glorious smoke ring with the core, now a tiny white dwarf, all that remains of the original star. It's quite a small object in angular size, so although it's visible in binoculars as, as a tiny fuzzy star, I suggest a small telescope to reveal its true nature. Now we're going to jump to nearby Cygnus, one of my favourite double stars, Albareo. This is a real celestial gem, well worth observing. The two stars are stunningly colourful. The pair are separated by 35 arc seconds, so it can be split in bin with binoculars again. The primary I find to be an amber orange at magnitude 3.5, while the slightly fainter uh, magnitude 5.1 star is an electric blue. 
Unfortunately though, they are not a true double, but a line of sight effect separated by 60 light years or so, and perhaps more importantly, travelling with different proper motions as they orbit the galaxy. But I find it anyway a beautiful sight, so well worth observing. And we must be grateful we live in this narrow window when these two stars of such different colours are aligned to us, and in millennia to come they will have separated into their own different paths around the galaxy. Now when I'm setting up, I like to look at double stars while waiting for my eyes to get fully used to the dark. And at this time of year, Gamma Virginis, or Porima, which is the second brightest star in Virgo, is a classic. Now this does need a small telescope to resolve it, as the separation between these two magnitude 3.6 stars is only 3 arc seconds. And this pair are 38 light years away, and they orbit each other every 169 years. So we can see them move over the course of a few years observing. And I have a note in my logbook to come back to Porima in a few years and see how they've changed. So we'll jump a bit further north now to another of my favourites, which is Alpha Canae's Venetici, or Cor Caroli, named after King Charles. Now these two stars are separated by 19 arc minutes, which is a distance of 110 light years, gives them an orbital period of 7,900 years. And there's an attractive difference between the two, and the brighter is magnitude 2.9, while well, the fainter is 5.6. And it's a good jumping off point to the, end the tour with another of my favourite sites, the Globular Cluster Messier 3. It's a fantastic site, easy visible in binoculars as a fuzzy golf, golf ball between Bright Arcturus and Cor Caroli. But it's when we look through a telescope, its true nature is revealed. And if we think of these pairs of stars, multiple stars we've seen this evening, then a quick glance at M3 through an eyepiece shows the explosion of stars making up this dense star cluster. So a beautiful sight to end the tour on. So I hope that has encouraged you to observe some of these double stars and a couple of my favourite deep sky objects thrown in for luck. So please do subscribe so you can catch my next video. And as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below.